BMW is working on the new 7 Series and i7 side by side. You see, BMW thinks that Mercedes and Audi are doing things wrong by having a separate product line for their luxury electric car and their luxury internal combustion engine car. So with Mercedes, you have the S-Class and the EQS, and they're completely different. Problem with that, cost. Two different production lines. Whereas BMW is using the opposite approach for its i4 and 3 Series. So it's basically the same car and platform, but one is internal combustion engined, the other is battery powered. And that's how it's gonna be for the 7 Series and the forthcoming i7. And I'm gonna tell you all about those two cars in this video. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching CarWow. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by talking about why I think there's gonna be another 7 Series. It's quite simple. Heritage. They're not going to get rid of the 7 Series name. Not yet, anyway, where well, they can still be producing an internal combustion engine car. I also know there's going to be another 7 Series because of this. Yes, that's a picture from one of our spy photographers, which clearly shows a new 7 Series, heavily camouflaged. Now, I know it's a 7 Series because A, the spy photographer told me, B, if you look closely, you can see the shape of a BMW kidney grill underneath that camo. And look at the size of it. It's bigger than a 5 Series, definitely bigger than a 3 Series. So it absolutely has to be the next 7 Series. And it's likely to go on sale early 2023. So what exactly does that 7 Series look like underneath that camouflage? Well, if you look close at the front again, can you see the outlines for some daytime running lights above normal headlights? Also, the grill, it's going to be bigger than before because BMW always increases the size of its grills on each iteration of the 7 Series. So this is what our experts reckon it looks like. Oh my God. Now, you're probably hoping that, ah, oh, you just made that, mate. It's not going to be like that at all. It's going to be much better looking. Well, do you know what? BMW has already hinted what it's going to look like because they've just unveiled the X. M concept and a lot of the features on the front of that car are going to inspire the look of the new 7 series so yeah a bigger grill than the current 7 series the stacked daytime running lights the huge air scoops at the front it's going to look like that people accept it but you can also accept the fact it's still going to be a traditional three box saloon body style so bonnet passenger compartment boot at least that's traditional eh now you've been suitably shocked, let's move on to the electric powered i7. So here are some spy pictures of that car. Look at it driving there, being all electric. Now, how do I know it's electric and I'm not just showing you some more spy pictures of the 7 Series because the silhouette is exactly the same. Well, I thought this through people. If you look closely, it says electric test vehicle down the side. So that's definitely the i7, not the normal 7 Series, right? So what does the i7 look like underneath that camouflage? Well, have a look at this. Yeah, it's, it's rather like the 7 Series, only that grill is blanked out and the air intakes slow down are slightly different because being electric, it doesn't need all the cooling of an internal combustion engine car. In fact, the difference is rather similar to that between a 4 Series Grand Coupe and an i4. Not only is BMW saving money by building the i7 and the 7 Series using the same platform, for all its electric cars, it uses the same drive system. Now, they can vary the power output of the motors and the size of the battery, but it generally starts from 70 kilowatt hours and can go all the way up to 120 kilowatt hours. Now, if you take the maximum battery capacity of 120 kilowatt hours, the i7 should be capable of a range of just over 400 miles. Now, BMW have pretty much matched its battery size to that in the Mercedes EQS. The EQS can go slightly further, 450 miles, but that's because it's got a really aerodynamic shape. And obviously the 7 Series is as aerodynamic so it'll have slightly less range in terms of charging it's going to charge at the same rate that you're going to be able to with the ix which is 200 kilowatts which means you'll be able to go from 10 percent full to 8 percent full in around 40 minutes if you can find a 200 kilowatt charger that is moving on to the motors so bmw will yet again use the same motors across its electric cars and if you mirror it to the i4 which starts with 340 horsepower moving all the way up to 544 horsepower in the m i4 m i i4 i now the top of the range i4 is currently the i4 m50 that has two electric motors one at the front one at the back and they drive all four wheels and produce a combined 
544 horsepower. So there's probably going to be the same version of the i7. However, being the 7 series, they'll probably want to give it a little bit more oomph. So it's likely it could have in excess of 550 horsepower. So what kind of performance will you expect from that car? Well, seeing as the i4 M50 does not 16 3.9 seconds, the i7 M50, because it's slightly heavier, will take a little longer. Not much though, probably do not 60 in between four and four and a half seconds. As well as M light cars, there's a good chance that for the first time ever, BMW is gonna do a full fat M version of the i7 or the 7 Series, not sure which one yet. So let's look at the M i7 first of all. So BMW has been caught testing a 5 Series, which is actually fitted with three electric motors, and the power output of that system is 720 horsepower. So that will go in an i7-based M car. However, they might take a different route and basically copy what AMG is doing with the GT four-door hybrid. And BMW could use the hybrid system it's just unveiled in the new XM. So that's a 4.4-litre twin-turbo V8 mated to electric motor with a combined output of 750 horsepower. Now they could do one or the other, or they might just do both, an MI7 and an M7 series. Which would you prefer if you had a choice? Let me know in the comments below. So what about the performance of these two cars? Well, let's start with the MI7. So that tri-motor M5 test mule does not 60 in two seconds, but then it is a test mule and it's probably been ramped up and they're just publishing those figures to go to Tesla and it's plaid, which can do not 60 in two seconds. The reality is that production version of the MI7 isn't gonna be quite so quick, partly because I have to dial back the motors for longevity and because it's gonna be heavier than the plaid. So let's look at what Mercedes currently do. The AMG EQS 53, that does not 60 in 3.4 seconds. So you can bet the BMW is probably gonna be just around the three second mark. Now, moving on to the hybrid, if you look at the AMG GT four-door hybrid, that's got 840 horsepower and does not 60 in 2.9 seconds. Once again, the BMW is going to have a bit less power, so it's probably going to do not 60 in around three to three and a half seconds. So far, we've only really talked about performance for the i7 and 7 Series. What really matters, though, is luxury and rear passenger space. Now, one of the problems that Mercedes has had with the EQS is that it's not quite as roomy in the rear as the S-Class, and that's partly down to the design. The aerodynamic shape means there's a little less headroom. BMW won't have this problem with the i7, though, because the body is the same as the 7 Series. Now, as with the current 7 Series and the Mercedes S-Class and EQS, you're gonna be able to get a normal three-seater bench in the back, awesome opulent first-class style seating with just two individual luxury chairs. Hopefully they won't style the interior like the new XM though, because it's a little bit in your face, isn't it? Most likely they won't, because obviously the 7 Series and the i7 are for a more conservative customer. Finally, let's talk about pricing, starting with the normal 7 Series. So at the moment, the current generation car is priced around £73,000. However, it's quite old. When they introduce the new one, it's likely to rise to about £80,000, so it'll match the entry-level Mercedes S-Class like for like. Now, the EQS is about £20,000 more than the equivalent S-Class, so that starts at £100,000. But as I mentioned at the beginning, because Mercedes are having to build the EQS on an all-new platform, that is a lot more costly, and that cost is passed on to the consumer. And that's why the EQS is about 20% more expensive than the equivalent S-Class. It's not going to be the same with BMW. So you're probably looking at a starting price of around £90,000 for the i7 when it goes on sale early 2023. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think of the new 7 Series and i7 in the comments below. Click on those windows there. And if you're thinking about buying a new car, you probably need to sell your current car. And you can do it through Carway to get a great price. Click on that box there to get and do that. See how much your current car is worth. It's free.